Welcome back to the DeFi 101 course. This course was made with support from the Solana Foundation. In it, we're teaching you everything you need to start using crypto on chain. And in this video, we're gonna answer the most important question. What exactly is DeFi? DeFi stands for decentralized finance. And DeFi is the term for financial products or applications that are built on permissionless blockchains. Let's break that down. Financial products can be things like lending, crowdfunding, or automated market makers. The commonality is they're built on permissionless blockchains and use smart contracts. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about what all this means. Permissionless blockchains are those that anyone can access, like Ethereum or Solana. This is in contrast to permission blockchains, like certain chains that have been built by traditional finance institutions, banks, and governments. People constantly debate what constitutes decentralized, but the term DeFi has come to refer broadly to financial applications on permissionless blockchains. Decentralized finance is best understood in contrast to centralized finance, which you've probably heard of and used simply as finance. Banks are centralized finance, your brokerage account is centralized finance, even your retirement account is a form of centralized finance. But even if you don't realize it, every time you use centralized finance, you're trusting that the place you're depositing your money will keep it safe and let you withdraw when you need it. And unfortunately, there have been real times in the past when that wasn't the case. Banks have at times decided to freeze services to political dissidents or people in unfavored industries. And if you ever try to make a large transfer or withdraw a lot of money all at once, you'll find that your bank is going to be very interested in learning what you need the money for, even though it's your money. DeFi presents an alternative. Instead of having a central authority to hold your money, DeFi applications use a special type of software known as smart contracts. And instead of needing to ask permission to use your money, you can access it 24 seven from your computer or really any computer in the world as long as you have your crypto wallet. And since the first DeFi project was launched in 2019, a lot of people have started to use DeFi. Over 5,000 DeFi startups have launched. Over $120 billion has been deposited into DeFi applications. If DeFi was a bank, it would be one of the 30 largest banks and certainly one of the fastest growing in the world. On some days, volume traded on decentralized exchanges has been 10% of the volume traded on the NASDAQ. Stable coins, AKA US dollars or other national currencies on the blockchain are now a $200 billion asset class and are used by people around the world to escape inflation from less stable currencies and to send cross-border payments. In short, people are using DeFi. Here are a few notable DeFi applications. Aave, the largest lending protocol in DeFi, allows you to borrow and lend digital assets. As of the time we're recording this video, Aave has over $30 billion in deposits. Uniswap allows you to swap cryptocurrencies directly from your wallet. Since inception, Uniswap has processed over $1.6 trillion in swaps and still processes billions of dollars of swaps every single day. But even if you aren't worried about self-custody and you aren't worried about giving your money to banks, in fact, pretty much everyone, including me, uses banks sometimes, there are still a lot of reasons to use DeFi. If you've ever traded cryptocurrency, you may have heard of tokens being listed on a centralized exchange like Coinbase, and the token was already at a billion dollar market cap prior to being listed. Meme coins like Pepe and Trump were already worth billions of dollars before they were ever available on centralized exchanges. So how was this possible? The answer is that it's possible because people purchased it directly from their wallet using DeFi. Or maybe you hold a digital asset like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Solana, and you wanna use it as collateral to take out a loan so as to not incur capital gains. You can do this instantly through DeFi. Or maybe you just want access to higher interest rates, which DeFi offers plenty of opportunities for. Because DeFi offers access to credit markets that would normally be unavailable to consumers, you can get access to yields that are higher risk, but also much higher reward. The common factor between these is that the applications are created using smart contracts and you're accessing them directly from your crypto wallet permissionlessly. One way to think about this is that DeFi makes it easier for anyone with an internet connection to create a financial startup. In a way, crypto and DeFi are for finance what the internet was for media. 50 years ago, to start a media company, you needed a radio show, a television show, or something like a newspaper press. Today, anyone can start a media company using social media, podcasts, email, and blogs. Accessing innovation is not without risk, however. Over $6 billion have been hacked from DeFi over the years, although the number of hacks has decreased since 2023. In the coming modules, we'll show you how to safely access DeFi for yourself and start exploring the many things it has to offer. Remember that to keep up to date on new opportunities in the crypto market, you can check out our newsletter at newsletter.dynamodefi.com. And to see more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.